Hey guys, Ethereal Light Art here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new to this channel and you like light painting, long exposure photography, or creativity, you're in the right place. Please subscribe and like, share with your artist friends, leave me a comment, I do appreciate them. Thanks for joining me on this journey. Welcome to the next episode of Dude, Where's My Flashlight? We have LPB Ambassador Jason Hartlight. Hartlight on Facebook and Instagram. We have his daughter, Denver, which is one of his top models here, joining us as well. Jason, I can't say thanks enough for sitting down. This has been a long time coming. And man, I am so excited to, to do this episode with you. How are you, man? Oh, I am great. Yeah, I'm really excited too. I've been watching what you've been doing and uh, just the interviews you've been, you know, doing with other artists, and I'm I'm so excited to be a part of that. So, well, you're an immense, immense part, a legendary part of this uh, community, and for us to have you and your expertise and some knowledge uh, to be shared with this beautiful community, yeah. um, we can't say thanks enough uh, from all of us. So, thank you for your effort. Awesome, thank you. You know, it's funny. Uh, I wanted to start this, and and when I'm kind of getting ready for an episode, I always write down some key words um, for the for the artist that I'm going to look at and and you know your passion uh, for this for this art form, just passion and energy honestly uh, is, it first came to my mind, you know and uh, just having fun um, and just always going for it, man and and so I guess my first question to you and the family, uh, how do you find the energy? Dude, you're a full-time dad. You're a full-time worker. You're a full-time ambassador. You must have a like a huge battery pack on you or something, man. How do you do it? Man, I, I ask myself sometimes the same thing, but um, I'm just a very motivated person. And, and, you know, I find a lot of inspiration in my family and being a father and being a good role model. And, you know, those are some things I didn't always have growing up. So to be in a position to be a good dad and, and, and be inspiring to my family and being inspiring to others that, you know, it's transitioned into is, is huge. And there's a lot of motivation there to, to just do what I do. <laughs> oh, man, and you do it so well, dude. And, and your family is lucky to have you and they're lucky, you know, obviously vice versa. I call it, I want to call it the love tribe. Uh, I actually got I just, the of the love tribe. I, uh, all right. There they yes. Are. Amazing. <laughs> I love it. And I love this new look. I, I Let's just keep going through some pictures uh, if you want. I mean, can you go, can you introduce all of these beautiful uh, human beings on the planet here? All right. Uh, yeah. So we've got, um, obviously myself is my daughter, Marilyn, my son, Eli. And then we got Denver right here, my beautiful wife, Morgan, and then Jasmine and Braylon. I can't see her, but she is right behind me. I gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And and do all of the children and all the members of the Love Tribe, do they all love light painting? Do they all jump in once in a while? Who's the most active? Uh who's uh, the most active? Definitely Jasmine and Denver. They're they're pretty active and um, you know, they're they're in a lot more of my work than my other kids are. But you know, I'm I'm newly married to, and and they're uh the new members of the family are really excited to get involved and and uh, incorporate them into my work. So it's it's always a lot of fun. So absolutely, and congratulations on the new marriage, man. New beginnings, new love. There's nothing better than that. Um, it's awesome. It is awesome. It is awesome, and it's something that honestly, from my point of view, um, is really inspiring. Honestly, Jason. I mean, you art aside, is is the family and the love that's coming out of your account, your personal account, your artist account. Yeah. Um, Really, it, it shines through on, on who you are as a human being and a dad. And, and yeah. buddy, uh, I every time I see something of yours, I, I am totally taken back and, and full of love. And I think that's, that's the goal of this, why we do this. Right. It, it's really neat because, you know, I was a single dad for, for a lot of years. And when, when, you're a, when you're a dad and you're trying to, you know, bounce work and school and just all these things. So I found a way to take my passions and kind of bounce it into spending time with my kids, you know, because let's be honest, you got to, you got to, as a parent, there are some things that you need to take care of for yourself in order to be a better parent. And I found that, you know, through my, uh, my passion with photography and light painting and, and incorporating them into my work really engaged us to spending more time together. So 
What a what an amazing gift uh, and a family activity. Uh, you know, anytime that I bring a new person into my artistic realm, you know, they're just, you know, they love the magic of the light painting art form. They just love, honestly, thinking outside the box and putting a brush, putting a brush in somebody's hand right. is, is, is quite empowering for their creativity, you know, because you don't have to be a perfect artist, you know, you don't have to be a perfect light drawer. You could, you know, make some cool mist and clouds. The next thing you know, you got a galaxy and then who doesn't want to see the galaxy? I mean, everyone loves the galaxies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is very true. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing, brother. Well, you know yeah. what? I guess, Jason, how long? Yes, yeah, perfect. Right. How long <laughs> have you been light painting? Like, when was the first time? Um, oh, man. Um, it was started back in the 35 millimeter days. And, and for whatever reason, I had this work phone um, with me while I was photographing and I had dropped it doing a long exposure. And, um, you know, this was the back in the day where you had to develop your film, drop it off at Walgreens and then go pick it up a couple of days later. Yes. So I pick it up and I see these images and I'm just like, holy cow, what did I do? Yeah. You know? And then uh, I thought I did something just, you know, special. And then I uh, I, I went on the on the Internet and started looking into light painting and other things. And I realized I didn't do nothing. <laughs> But yeah, and that that kind of uh, it kind of just grew from there and took off. So, and how many years has it been, brother? Um, I would say that was around maybe 2004. Oh my! When that happened, yeah. That is absolutely amazing. And yeah. and can you can you just? I always like to ask this because I've only been light to painting for about two and a half years, and I would love to obviously put longer time in that, which will go forward, but I can't turn back the clock. Right. What What's the big difference between 2004, 2005 into 2020 um, in, in terms of light painting? I mean, it's obviously grown immensely. Yeah. What, what big changes have you seen primarily? Um, the rise of social media has changed right. everything about this. Um, Anything else like? Yeah, I think, um, you know, initially it was more that someone did on an individual basis as a form of expression. And, you know, as social media has grown and, um, you know, different representatives of the life painting community have gotten better and, and more. I, I want to say commercialized it, but maybe that's not the right word. But um, it, it's kind of just grown and popularized, you know, everything. So um, I think in that aspect it's you know that's really where a lot of the growth has come just yeah you know good mentors in in the community too you know so after dennis smith is his video that he did about his story and how relatable it was um you know you you really saw a lot of growth after that too you know because people could could relate everybody wants to relate to somebody uh, you can relate through you know their art and their their story um there's a lot of beautiful things that, that can happen so Absolutely. You know, in that episode in season one with Dennis, I think it was episode 12, you know, we, we got into some of his story. And if you know his story and uh, how tough he is and the courage it takes to uh, dig yourself out, because, you know, sometimes life is hard. Life isn't always uh, easy. Like, you know, you're not going to get a perfect light painting every time you hit the shutter. So, you know, you got to it's the resilience and the toughness that keeps, you know, keeps you fighting and keeps you, right. you know, shooting more and, and living life and Honestly, loving the ones around you and loving, you know. Oh, love. I agree. Definitely yeah. agree, yeah. I love it, man. I love it. Well, I want to take a quick second, speaking about love, um, right. I want to take a quick second and pause to give uh, an immense thank you to Jason Page. Um, yes. He was the first uh, light painting image that I ever saw. Um, it immediately enamored me, and I, my heart almost exploded um, when I first saw that and I knew immediately in my heart and everything about me that I was going to be a light painter. Um, I wanted to learn all about it. So I just wanted to, you know, say thank you. If there's anything you want to tell Jason, this is the time light painting brushes, um, is an amazing company. They've done so much, if not almost everything for this community. Right. Uh, is there anything you want to tell Jason or, or speak on to, to yeah, light just brushes? Man, I, I, I can't even begin to say enough good things about Jason. Just, uh, I mean, that guy is just truly amazing. And the support that he gives me is absolutely just mind blowing. And yes. And to see, you know, from 2014, this man take this little idea and, and to see what it has encompassed itself into 
um, you know, to where we're flying to LA to photograph celebrities and just uh, in that experience alone was just absolutely just mind blowing. Um, but to be a part of his dream and, and to have the support that I have from him, um, I, I can't say enough. I mean, he truly is a great person and a great friend and a, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of the light painting brushes community and, and, and be an ambassador for such a great company. So. Absolutely. It's an amazing honor and you do it so well, brother. Uh, you touched on the celebrities. Uh, can you, can you walk through that event? Because that was monumental. Uh, again, uh, this is one of those ones where my heart starts exploding. Uh, when I see these, you know, how was it? Was, were you nervous going into it? Tell me A to Z what was going on here. You know, that's, that's the crazy thing is, you know, I can do, um, um, I can do workshops, you know, literally fly across the country and, and go, you know, shoot these celebrities. And um, it was so high stressed, but, and you only had one take with these celebrities, but oh, I know, I know. Step reaction, like, you know, Halsey and just them and, and what they, what they see when they see it on the computer screen was just an, insane. Yeah. But uh, to be a part of that whole experience was, was really something special. Uh, it's so amazing. And we'll, we'll flip through some of those images. If you have any more, this is a beautiful image. Um, if, yeah, this is just craziness, craziness. Look at the light painting tricks uh, disappearing. I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. And this just is beautiful. That's where I did the peacock, the uh, that that effect that I did a tutorial on. So, but I love it. I mean, I we it. literally had you know um, probably 30, 30, 60 seconds a piece with each celebrity. So one take to get it right, and you know we we nailed it. Efren and Jason and Melissa and just we uh, we really created something real special when we went. So it was. No. Great. Absolutely, and, and hats off to those other artists that were helping, uh, the other ambassadors, uh, all the LPB ambassadors, uh, in fact, across the world, um, are all doing a terrific job. They're all very creative and, and supportive of the community, and you know, from this side of the community, uh, again, a huge thank you to all of them. Um, man, great job on that, dude. When I saw this series come, I mean, like I said, I was so proud and happy and excited to, to, to honestly talk to you about it because it's kind of a once in a lifetime thing. And it, and it really led to, um, I, well, maybe it led to your live light paintings because when I saw you do your live light painting, I was like, oh my God, again, you know, take fast forward two and a half years until I saw first Jason's light painting on a still. And then I see your live light painting and yeah. doing it in the moment, capturing it to the camera which of course I've been taught and that's how I paint. And you've, you've really given me the instrument amount of courage to actually go live and say, look, this is an art form that we are performing. This right. is this moment. And brother, from my personal, uh, I guess from, my, from me to you, thank you so much because- You're Welcome, man, thank you. That means a lot. It means a lot to me, man. and and. I just, I honestly can't say thanks enough. It's just a huge, it's a huge boost to me. We have a little bit different artistic styles, but you know what? It all comes down to light painting and I'm glad that we all have different stuff because Definitely. I want to yeah. see cool different things, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, actually I want to talk about the first photo of yours that, wow. that was, that really blew me away. Um, and I think it was a spiral photo I think it might be your favorite. I think I read something about your favorite one. It got nominated or won some awards. I definitely think this is it. Oh, man. Dude, <laughs> you know, when I saw this photo right here, I was like, okay, this is something special. I tried to do the spiral technique a little bit, and I couldn't quite get it. Uh, then I watched your tutorial, and it was really, really easy uh, as far as, like, how you explained it and how you start and all of that. Can you can you walk us through uh, this image, first of all, where is it and how you do it? Um, yeah, well, one thing about the the spiral that I wanted to hit on, which is really cool, is it's, uh, I was talking with Paige about this, actually, and it's really cool that we as artists just take the simplest thing. I'm literally taking, you know, a light sword, and I'm sitting there, and I'm spinning it around in, in a spiral, and we're presenting that into the world, and then people grab that you know, which, which wouldn't even been existed if you didn't just, you know, do it. And now people are doing that all over, all over the world. So it's, 
that alone it just blows my mind that you take something so simple and people grab it and run with it and, and try it on their own. Um, you know, like that tutorial you're talking about, it's it's coming up on like 900 something thousand views. And it's just mind blowing that 900,000, you know, people have seen this video. So it's amazing, dude. And that's that's a testament to your your skill, man. That's a testament to how far reach you're reaching people's hearts because you, I, I have a hard time thinking that you can actually paint or create art without having some bit of your heart involved with that process. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so you, you've you yeah. touched 900,000 hearts, if not twice that or four times that. So, dude, I mean, I don't know what else. I don't know what else you can climb to achieve. Honestly, that's like the ultimate, I think. I mean, oh, my God. I would love to see that video hit a million. I would just be ecstatic. So we'll we'll see what happens. But well, you know what? I don't have a ton of listeners. All the listeners here are definitely light painters and are definitely in, into the community. I'm trying to maybe expand into create creative, just creatives, just creativity, number one. But I'll put the link of that in the description. We'll try to get some hits that way. Um, any products from LPB, we'll we'll put in there if you guys want. All right. uh, is is the celebrity LPB memory? Is that your favorite? Do you have a second favorite that you'd like to just tell us a story about? As far as like, man, I I, gear, I know you've got some stories, <laughs> brother. I know you got some. Yeah, let me click on the same image. Let me show you this. So uh, this is a funny story. I don't know if you can see that right there. Of course. Of course. So Jason Page, he he was up here. He came up here to Virginia, and um, we were filming a vlog. Actually, I was I was doing a uh, I was a guest of honor artist at a, a Geek Mob, and Jason came up. Uh, he wanted to bring some tools and stuff. We set up a booth and did all that. Well, um, towards the end of the day, once we finished everything up, I was like, let me go take you to some spots. Well, this particular spot is Thunder Ridge. It's off the Parkway. I mean, we're talking middle of nowhere. I mean, it is desolate out there. So we get out there and uh, we get all of our gear set up. And all of a sudden, these two ladies, let me show you again, one dressed as a devil and one dressed as an angel, just walk up out of the woods. Wow. And me and Jason, we both just pause and we looked at each other. We were like, is this, is this happening? And uh, we were like, you guys could not have come to the per most perfect place at the perfect time. And uh, we light painted with them for like, you know, two, two something hours. And it was just so real because we're like out in the, literally the middle of nowhere and an angel and a devil just show up and <laughs> we're, we're just floored. But and it wasn't it was it was, uh, it was like September, you know, so it wasn't it wasn't anything, you know, it was crazy, though. That is amazing. And so, uh, I'm, I'm, what are they? Uh, what is the lady? What is the angel holding here? Because it looks like the angel is choking out another angel while the devil is actually trying to save her. Is that what's going on here? <laughs> That's my daughter Jasmine in the middle. She, uh, yeah. Okay, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we put Jasmine in the middle of them, and, and uh, I think Jason did the devil side. I did the angel, and we kind of just collaborated a quick light painting and uh it was a lot of fun i love it i love it and this is in virginia i take it yeah it, uh yeah. that particular place it's about 25 30 minute drive from where i live but okay yeah. okay and and what what beautiful god's country is all around you i mean are you kidding me i mean let's digress not digress but let's let's divert over to the photography side mm -hmm. of things because you're a phenomenal light painter and a phenomenal photographer and you put those together and you've got just gold you know pure gold can you tell me about the lightning shots? I mean, I know it's lightning season right now. I know you did, I think, a 28-minute maybe exposure. Can you just go through lightning photos and yeah. what it takes? Um, just, um, you know, a lot of people think that you need, you know, like a, a lightning trigger or something to photograph lightning. But I just shoot in bulb, you know, ISO 400, F8, and, you know, maybe – about two minutes is about the sweet spot. You don't want it to, you know, get too much noise. This The Canon 60 that I use is pretty good about noise. And uh, once you put it in the Lightroom, Lightroom is even better about removing noise out of an image. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the process there. But, yeah, it, it's I love storms and I love I love nature. And, um, you know, a lot of the inspiration for that is definitely, you know, Eric and Dennis Smith, what, what they do with um, – incorporating these beautiful landscapes into their light painting work and um that kind of drove me to 
be better at it, be better at, at doing landscapes. And in turn, where I found out is they coincide with one another. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the stuff that I learn in landscapes and, you know, such as lightning and exposure, and I can incorporate that into light painting and, and, you know, the other way around. So it's, it's kind of developed me into a, a better photographer because of that. You know, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I started off, this is a funny story, I think we mentioned this in season one, but I started off primarily light painting. I never even shot a normal photo through a, a daytime photo. I never used autofocus ever. And so I get done with my first like kind of mini get together, like two or three people out light painting, trying to see what it is, you know, or using the different tools and we're total basic, you know, playing around, but super fun. And then the sunrise comes and everyone's like, oh, let's do some, you know, blue hour sunrise photos or maybe it's yeah, blue hour, I guess in the morning. I don't know. Anyway, but we get to the sunrise and they're like, take my photo. And I'm like, I, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> like, I don't know how to use a camera. I was like, I've never used it. Like I never, never was a photographer before a light painter. And and right. the more my photography skills increase, my light painting has really, really gone better. And, you know, I, I give a, a huge, you know, thank you to you and, and Dennis and Eric and those guys that are just really, really, really good photographers and really good light painters. And like you said, you can take one or the other. You can take things you've learned from being a wedding photographer or a macro photographer, and you can actually incorporate that into your light painting because it's a type of photography. You know? it, it, I think a lot of light painters would be surprised if they would, um, you know, people that say, well, I, they go into that creative drought or whatever. Well, utilize that time and maybe transition over to some landscapes or some portraits and 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 really involve yourself in, and, and see how it all co coincides together and, and makes you better. You, you'd be really surprised just doing these other elements of photography and how it all transitions together. You know, and, and I think it's also a good thing, just repetition, just touching your camera, you know, yeah. just making sure that you're focused and making sure that you have the settings down right and what those are. And honestly, maybe just even as simple as a packing list that you just, you know, because I mean, how many times, I mean, I can't, can't tell you how many times I've left something at home and my memory card's full and yeah. you name it, I've done it, if not multiple times, more, sometimes more embarrassing than others. Uh but that's a whole nother episode of, of my bloopers. <laughs> hey, uh, one funny thing about Paige is when you travel with this man, he he he's a he's a packer. Okay. I mean, <laughs> he probably had eight luggage bags. Just oh, I mean, this, guy, this guy brings everything you need, so you you don't have to worry about ever losing anything. He's he's got it in one of them backpacks. I love it, dude. Well, that's obviously why this name of the podcast is Dude, Where's My Flashlight? Because every meetup I've been to, you know, there's always a black little flashlight that's hidden under a bag or a rock or a light or a tube or something. Right. And half the time I leave them in the actual tool. tool. I yeah. put the tool away, forgetting that the light or the torch is attached to it. And then I'm like, my torches are missing. <laughs> it's like, no, dude, it's attached to your bag already. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. So, Let's talk about light painting brushes tutorials. I mean, what what an amazing learning uh, resource uh, this is. And I'll put the link into it. Jason's done an amazing job. Everyone, uh, as far as the whole team, has participated uh, in this. Right. Do you have Do you have one that's your favorite uh, besides the spirals? I love the spirals. I love the sheets. Uh, do you have anything else? Uh, the sheets are just you, brother. My sheets, my baby. I, I love that. And just, uh, I, I would like to redo that tutorial. Yeah. And, uh, just because it, 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 it's involved so much when I, when I look at like the, you know, like to what it is now, you know, from, from where it was just, um, it, it, there's so much you can do with this, this technique and, uh, present that out into the world. Something that I started, you yeah. know, it, just it blows my mind and, and I, I love that feeling of, of sharing things that I create and people and inspiring and motivating other people so um, I would love to redo that tutorial but uh, the peacock tutorial that that one I was really excited about that uh, that effect when um, when we were in LA um, and I was I was excited to get back home and and do a tutorial about that technique so that that was another good one and yeah. that was the first one where I incorporated my wife, Morgan. So that was yes. the first, you know, with my, the new chapter of my life being involved in, in the, the things that I do. So, well, hats off to Morgan and all of the, the support that goes into this uh, crazy art form. There's late nights, there's drained energy, there's frustration from things not working right. I mean, this is not 
the cakewalk uh, that Instagram and social media make it look like. By any means, this is this is not an easy task to be a light painter. It is very challenging. Yeah. Um, so I hear you, brother, and I love all those techniques. Can you? Uh, is there a way that you can actually just walk us through uh, the peacock? Are you using Are you using a prism to get the? Are you just Are you flowing up like this with your blade? Um, well, sometimes I do. This is one of my favorite tools, the the fractal. Yeah. That thing. Yeah, that one. I just used one. I just used one. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's an unbelievable. Sometimes I'll use the fractal. Um, How do you mount it? I don't want to hold that and then go light paint. So I got to get a bunch of stands. I got to I got to figure out my studio. You've got the wizard castle here that I'd like to look at. Can we let's take a little tour of the factory in a minute. But I mean, God, dude, my my studio looks like a toy box compared to this thing. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, um, uh, I love this. I, I, when I, when I got into this house and I saw the space downstairs, I knew that I needed a space like this to, uh, um, you know, really have a space to create and do stuff. And, um, but yeah, here's the, here's the arm. Okay. I just cool. attached it to my tripod. Yeah. This will be out front and then having girls, you know, they have lots of hair bands. So I yeah. think around the front and it wraps too, brother. There you go. <laughs> right around the, right around your camera and keeps it on there perfect so okay okay and then is that just sort of like a snake is that a snake what is what do you call that thing An I believe this is i might be wrong the plant the clamp okay clamp with a p oh the plant yeah, okay yeah. Uh, but um yeah you can get it at uh b and h online but yeah you okay. can find these yeah all right cool all right nice Cool. I like it. I like it. Yeah, dude. Peacock technique. Oh, wait. So is it possible to, is, is this, is this the, uh, can we see everything that's happening here in the studio? Can we go through some of the tools on your bench and yeah. what's, what, what's going on here and what are you working on? Is there any big projects? That, yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, my favorite. <laughs> hey, listen, when is, when is Jason Page going to release a special edition blade? I mean, it should be only out for like, a week you get one week only you have to get this <laughs> i was floored when uh johnny griffin and uh jason they uh they came up here to virginia for the the meetup the light painting meetup i had in virginia and this was the first thing that they gave me and <laughs> it's uh i don't know if i can get my my face on there what oh yes you can oh yes you can Buddy. amazing <laughs> when i saw that post i i again came unglued i love this now is the blade, is it blade, is it engraved with like a router or something? How yeah. did they, um, how did they do I don't it? know how Johnny really did this, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's engraved pretty, pretty good. I don't know if how well you can see that. Honestly, dude, I stopped asking how Johnny does things. I just, I just take them for face value and I'm like, you know what? I, I'm so happy that you live and exist in our world because I don't know, understand half the things he does, but. Guys. Man, that, that's another guy. He is just amazing. He makes me these just cool little, just all kinds of little gadgets that he plays around with. And, uh, you know, I'll brainstorm something with him and he'll turn around and make it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just I'm, I'm at the, the tool aspect of it. I'm not really that creative of actually making stuff. I, I can envision the image and what I want to create, but to do yeah. something, you know, like that. And, but, yeah. Oh man, do you have any other really cool weird things that maybe no one's seen before? I mean, because you've got you've got two. Uh... Oh man, you should see my shelf over here. It's. Uh... <laughs> can we can we spin it, Denver? Can you spin the camera for us? Can we can we take a quick tour? Let's see if we can. Holy smokes, that's a gorilla rack full of tools. Right. <laughs> oh my god, amazing. Yeah. Look Wait. at all those colored filters. Ooh, I love it. All right. I've seen some people take the luggage cart or like a tool chest that rolls right. uh, and they have the dividers and all the stuff is organized. You know, I'm not an organized person. I'm a total spontaneous artist where I'm like see colors and mixing and, and right. you know, I see the full picture, but like you, I don't know how to make them. I just use them. <laughs> I, well, you know, the last couple of years, there's just been an explode. Like I'm, I'm all about color in an image and yeah. just, there's been, yeah two different things that have come up like the um the light excursion light yeah yeah light. i got mine right here i did i did an interview with frank uh this uh, yesterday amazing 
And then they come, you know, with the light painting brushes, the screw on connectors like this. These two products right here have opened up just so many different color hues and just so many different options to use in your images. It, it's unreal. You know, oh. just great tools. Absolutely, brother. And then everywhere in between, because, you know, what I've been doing is I've been uh, painting uh, with like maybe a red on this side, but I also put a blue overtone to it. So I got a purple in there and you've got all those colors in between because, you know, the camera is seeing the light that shine through there. So if you double up on something, you're going to mix those colors just like you would be mixing a palette. Yeah, because uh, that's all we are. We're, we're just painters. You know, people quite don't understand what we actually do and how we do it. But essentially, we are we are literally just painting space. We're right. painting space. Um, yeah. Which is and that's amazing. anything, you know, a, a dark area, um, you know, light erases light. So if, if, you know, you're in a dark area and someone is like, well, how do you even paint there? It's, you know, it's dark. Well, you can, you can literally use a light to get you to where you want to, like, say it's a waterfall or something like that. And then you can go back and actually, you know, paint it out. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I love it. And Denver, this question may be for you. Uh -huh. What's your favorite part about light painting? Um... It would be just be like spending time with him. Yeah. Like seeing how he does it. It's just amazing to me seeing how how amazing <laughs> it is. Seeing like being in it. I think I got a picture of Denver yeah. right here. Let's look at this one. Which you wanna talk about this one? Um no, no. what is that one? Wow. Um right. <laughs> oh wow, yes. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah. Oh man. Just being in like his pictures are really inspiring and like when I grow up I would love to be just like him he oh, that's right <laughs> he's a, like he's an amazing person an amazing light painter dad oh I think you said it I think you nailed it uh you hit the nail on the head I couldn't agree more Denver how lucky are you guys to be a good team over there I love this I love this yeah and Denver do you ever pick up a brush and actually do you actually paint yeah. They actually yeah. have their yeah, own have uh, Facebook page. Yeah. It's Little Little Hearts uh, Light Painting. They're probably the youngest that. light painters in the world, but yeah. um, they've got their own images on there um, that, that they've literally have created on their own. So, Well, you will have one more follower. Uh, definitely <laughs> a huge supporter. I will comment and like your stuff. Uh, I will fully support all of that. I love seeing children paints. Um, anytime I can actually put a paintbrush or be around the imaginative uh, little awesome brains and energy that these right. human beings have is just, it's yeah. really, honestly, you just know, put you can't put it in words. It's just amazing. Look at this one. Look at this one. Yeah, that's a recent one uh, we did with Denver. Um, that was a couple weeks ago. Yeah. But yeah. I love it. And I love how every picture honestly tells a different story and has a different feeling and sentiment to it. You know, you can really, and that's what art is. It's, it's, it's like you said, you want it to relate to somebody. You want to pull out an emotion. You want to actually have them think about something or feel something. And brother, you do it. You do it. Awesome. I mean, it's just so inspiring, man. I'm so, so happy to be here with you, man. It's so good. <laughs> uh, so on the back table here, uh, do you have, do you have the Spira jib? And I do right here. Yeah. And I guess the I guess the more important question is how come you can't get it out of second gear? Um, for some reason, <laughs> when I switch the gears, the chain falls off. I, I like to do like the, the right around 20 spins. Yeah. Uh, just like the geometry, the way it looks. Um, for some reason, when I change it over to a different gear, the chain just falls off so i'll leave it there yeah but i'm working on it we'll, we'll, we'll fine tune it one day and and get it. it it's an amazing light painting tool just uh i've always been fascinated with uh spirographs and um i think you can see a lot of that in my work um yeah you know there there is that geometry aspect of it that i uh, am drawn to um so the that tool right there is awesome Oh man, I know. Hats off to Johnny again, brother. Hats off to Johnny. I mean, what a what an amazing human being that is. Uh, Jason, I want to talk about the 52 week challenge. Right. Uh, what, what an amazing uh, thing for the community. 
Uh, can you share some images of what we've seen so far? I mean, I love your choices. I, I love all the choices. They all make sense. They all seem to be around. Everyone has one, right? Right. Spaghetti noodles. I mean, yes. I mean, awesome. You know, when I, uh, with all the, you know, isolation going on and stay at home, like it wasn't, it, it, I, I had planned this out back in January. So we didn't know, you kind of just all transitioned perfectly as far as timing, if you want to call it that. Um, but just to, uh, it's important to me just to inspire and motivate and be a, a good ambassador to the community and um, engage with people. Um, I, I enjoy that. And um, I, I had the idea of doing a, a challenge and I thought it would be awesome just to, you know, throw it in the group and say, hey, anybody want to play along and, and follow along with this? You're more than welcome to. And um, so far, it's been great. You know, everybody has played along. There's been some beautiful images and it's, it's nice to see people uh, engage with something you're doing. So no, um, I can save any images on here. Um, okay. we, we'll yeah, we'll get them next time. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, so a couple more questions. Uh, this will probably air in June. So we have a good four weeks. So no one's going to see this. Right. Can, you, can you give me a little bit of uh, in peek behind the curtain of what's coming next week or the, or the what's the, what's, What's the next item? Man, I, I really don't plan out my shots. Uh, honestly, I, uh, cool. I'm constantly, let me show you my book here. I'm constantly thinking about images. And yeah. then, um, you know, I'll jot them. I actually carry around a book. Cool. Um, and I just, I jot down <laughs> chicken scratch. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, and then uh, these become images, you know. Uh, I just. I've gotten to a point to where um, once I see an image in my head, um, I, I come pretty close to uh, replicating what, what I'm after. Um, so I've said this before. I don't know if that's scary or genius, but. <laughs> it know? doesn't matter as long as it's being done. I mean, right. you know, uh, I try to stop labeling things um, right. because I just want to be is, you know, just do it. You know, I think half of it, for me, I've got two life models. One is anything is possible. And the other one is um, you don't know until you try. Right. And the, the reasoning behind this is anything is possible is the dream aspect, is the imaginative. Like you can really light paint anything you want. If you put your mind to it, right. you can figure out a way to do it. And then the second half is actually just going to do it uh, because it's a lot easier to sit here and take notes. And I've got, you know, five notebooks full of ideas. But if I never go do them. Right. Then, you know, so there's there's half of its action, half of its uh, thinking or planning. Right. And that's a perfect example of, of your success, honestly, uh, and continued success of, of, of you actually thinking about them and actually just then go doing them. Um, yeah, yeah. Amazing. And that's what's so awesome about the 52 week challenge is just to say, all right, um, we're going to shoes like last week, you know, with the shoes. Just I had uh, I had my daughter stand on a glass table and shot from underneath and and just doing those little things has opened up um, other possibilities that kind of domino effect into other creative images. So yeah, um, love that aspect. So it's totally, totally. Awesome. And what's the, what's the weirdest household item that you've ever light painted with outside, outside or inside the challenge? Just name one weird thing that you were like, Oh, I'm going to use this. Right. Oh man. You know, from the get go of light painting people, I'm pretty well known for using anything really, you know? Yeah. Um, Amazing. Yeah. I, I'll literally just grab something and, hey, look and see what happens here. You know, a loofah. And we'll, yeah. we'll shoot through a loofah or, you know, saw anything and uh, try to create something with it. And um, a lot of times something just real unique. And I love taking the ordinary and, and just sharing something spectacular with it. So, um, yeah, because, you know, people take for granted the things that are around you. And there's a, there's a lot of beautiful things that can be created from nothing. No, and absolutely. And, you know, uh, one of my favorite episodes from last season, too, was with Rod Evans. He DIYs a lot of different tools and a lot of different things. And, you know, my goal for this podcast, I hope that everyone can light paint more and to make it accessible to people that maybe don't have a lot of resources to buy, you know, super expensive, uh, you know, tools. They can actually make them themselves or grab something that's already purchased at your house that would work just as well, you know, or maybe a little bit different, maybe not exactly the same and not as bright and not as crisp, but you're creating art and you're, you're being happy with it. Right. Um, and that's, and that's, I think Jason's uh, Jason pages ideas as well in the beginning too, is just get as many people light painting 
and spreading this love as possible, you know. And look what it's transitioned to. Uh, You've seen this trend, this huge transition, especially the last five years. It's just went, it's crazy. It's and uh, I'm excited to see where it goes from here. So, you know. Totally, totally. So my weirdest thing is a yak horn. Can you see this yak horn? Yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> it's a yak horn and yeah. it's from Budapest, Hungary. Um, it's actually a Viking drinking horn. You can actually use it as a megaphone too when your models aren't paying attention. You can actually talk to them like this. Um, Anyway, so yeah, that was my that was my weirdest thing. I I think I used it as some sort of light plant because it has a nice little kind of plant like shape, a cone. So I did a little cattail or something off of it uh, down by the swamp in the creek. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, buddy, well, I have to ask. This is going to be a maybe a random question, but what does the name Carl Mecklenburg mean to you? Carl Mecklenburg. Yeah. Uh... I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, we're going to skip that one. He's an old, uh, he's number 77 for the Broncos. He played in the 70s and oh. the 80s. Okay. He's an amazing linebacker. Everyone always goes to John Elway, and, and everyone knows, like, no, if you're a Broncos fan, I'm going and I'm voting for Carl I, Mecklenburg. I the Broncos nation down, and I am so, I'm, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's why we edit that. That one's going to be omitted. Don't worry. <laughs> Oh, man. I love it, man. Hey, Jason, I was actually curious. Uh, do you ever light paint with an indie filter? Um, I, you know, a lot of people have asked that. And, and um, I have done some um, I was inspired by Eric. Eric did one of his um, one of his vlogs was uh, about daytime light painting. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I attempted to do some daytime light painting after watching that. Um, and I did use an indie filter um, and it worked. Yeah, yeah. It, it did work, um, but that was the the first time I've ever used an ND. Um, other than my landscapes, I, I, I yeah. all of that is with, with ND filters. Um, yeah, for the landscape work. And you have a ten stop. Can you explain what an ND filter is? I, I want this podcast to be a little bit educational, and even though it may be something simple for us, a lot of people don't know. Can you explain what an ND filter is and why it's used? Yeah, so um, I, I use a, a six stop. ND and a 10 stop ND. It's actually the uh, Lee Big Stopper and the Lee Little Stopper. Um, so it just uh, what it what it says it does. It drops the the sensitivity to light by six stops. So um, you're able to uh, you know expose the scene for long exposure um, to get the streaking clouds or uh, you know the streaking of, of water movement things like that. So um, they're really good with, uh, especially if you're shooting raw with landscapes, just retaining a lot of color in the image. Because um, oh, okay. a raw file, you want to retain the, the most amount of information in that image as possible. And, you know, that's what's funny about landscapes, too, versus light painting, where I have to be careful because part of landscape artwork is um, post-processing. Mm -hmm. um, trying to recreate, you know, what it is that you saw with all that information in a raw image. So where you got to be careful is, you know, with my light paintings, you, you're you're seeing what what I'm literally creating, and you know this from from being a light painter yourself. Yeah. Um, so those aren't over post processed. Or versus landscape work, um, that is a huge part of it. Is is post processing, and yeah. filters that you know are, are a tremendous help of of retaining that information that you need to post process. Yeah, and so essentially the ND filter is going to make the uh, sunglasses for the lens in, in a layman's term, and yeah. you're going to be able to take a longer exposure to capture more information Correct, uh, yeah. because you have uh, sunglasses on, you're not going to overexpose the image. Is that, sure. That's the idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I haven't tried it yet. Um, but, you know, I get to the point where I'm on set, uh, everything's, I walk around, you know, a, a good maybe a tip for a lot of people is when you get to your location, get there early. Don't, don't really show up right at blue hour, get there early, enjoy the sunset, enjoy the company. You know, there's life beyond light painting. Right. Um, and honestly, kind of take a, take a moment to feel the surroundings and, and incorporate and integrate them into what the arts that it's about to come, you know, right. um, I, I clear the set. If there's any debris or garbage or something that I don't want in my picture, and often I, there's props all around. If you grab a branch or a pine cone or something, that yeah. might be the focal point that really could 
bring your image to the next level. Um, well, you know, with, with saying that, you know, some of the, if you look at photographers around the world, some of the most successful photographers in the world um, literally never leave 50 miles from their home um, because you, you learn, you know, what, what clouds produce what, what ridges create, you know, different kind of uh, air movement and what clouds are going to be produced. And you, you know how to get around storms and, and different lighting elements that uh, make beautiful images. So you know, like, like I said, some of the most successful photographers in the world never leave 50 miles from their home. Yeah, amazing, amazing. <laughs> Well, you know what? Uh, hopefully in this lifetime, we're going to learn how to, like Star Trek, uh, time warp around the world. If you could dematerialize and materialize in another location to light paint in, right? where would you go, man? Where would you go? You can take your whole family, too. This is a group. Just, wah, a big hug, well, a big cinnamon roll hug, <laughs> and you guys are going to show up somewhere else. Where right. are you going to be? Man, Iceland would be a dream. I'd love to do yes. some landscapes there um, with some uh, light painting and, and incorporate both of those together. But um, also, I, I have a dream of uh, Dubai. I, I would absolutely just that futuristic look of the uh, the buildings and just the architecture and um, just that whole cult culture, um, you know, around that area. I would love to to experience that for sure. Oh man, two great choices. You know, my, my friend uh, is Icelandic and he's, he goes back once in a while and there's this awesome blue lagoon that's like a soaking warm pool and they've got uh, little mini horses there and the fjords and the landscape. You know, I'm, I'm, I've never been to Ireland as well, but that's a huge one on my list. Um, but wow. Yeah, no, hopefully this world will get back to normal here and yeah. we want to make sure that, you know, we do it right and do it safely and, and protect those that we love. Um, and, and honestly, take this serious. Uh, this is a serious time that we should all um, come together. Um, so, yeah, I, I, and again, I appreciate your posts about that, too, uh, because, you know, we are all in this together. We all are. Uh, you know, yeah. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> now, is now can, let's talk about this image real quick. OK. Uh, and so the flags, is that in a lens ball? And that's shot first through a, maybe an iPad picture? So um, towards the end of last year, 2019, I started doing a lot of stuff um, where I'll take a, uh, a light painting image that I create, and then I, I create a, a digital rendition. Let me show you an example, probably something something like that. So that that's oh. actual, that's actually a, a light painting. And then I transition it and, and do something else with it. And um, my goal was to photograph that and then create a light painting within a light painting within a light, kind of like recycling your image. Amazing. And through that process, um, I discovered that I could actually use my iPhone. So I take my iPhone or my iPad and um, I, I mark off on my lens where that's going to be at. And yeah. then or create a light painting around it. Um, so basically, I'm, you know, my light, my iPhone's right up in front of my my camera. Yeah. In a picture of whatever image that is, removing it out of the frame and then creating the light painting around it. So. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a lot of it's it it takes some um, you know practice, but uh, it, it can be pulled off. And it's uh, here's one I did of my wife with the with the earth holding it. Yeah, amazing. But Amazing. It's a really fun technique. And, and, you know, in turn, just with everything else that's going on in the world, it uh, gave me an opportunity to, uh, you know, express myself in, in a more positive manner and, and, you know, hopefully share some hope and, um, you know, be some in inspiration and, and with everything going on. So, you know, that that's always a plus. Absolutely, man. Thank you for all of that. Uh, you know, one of the goals for me this year, um, not only just do season two of the podcast, but honestly try to create more impactful art. Um, yeah. You know, because at some point as in an artist's career uh, or a light painter career, or any artist or any creative, it's like, well, what's the end goal? You know, like, you know, I can do a thousand different light painting portraits of models and stuff, but I, I really want to send an impactful message. I really want to, you know, I really want to, when somebody sees this image, uh, there's no denying that it's going to inspire some hope or love or goodwill for your fellow neighbor, for your fellow mm -hmm. human. Um, so thank you for that. I think it's amazing. I think Sam uh, Sam Mass also is kind of on the same uh, same track. I think you either inspired by him or 
vice versa, it doesn't matter. But um, yeah, he's doing some beautiful yeah. images in the world too. Um, it was awesome because uh, um, you know that's that blows my mind too. Is you know I have this idea and I do this, and then about the same time that I was creating these images with the Earth, I saw Sam. I looked at his work, and it was the same thing. So we were literally doing the same thing. Um, you know, worlds apart. He's in France. Here I am in small town USA, and uh, we're we're doing something similar. So that that was that was really cool. I I couldn't agree more. I can't tell you how many times I've got to even even already have the image done, like right. you, not even doing it, but just having this idea and image done, and then literally literally that morning or the night before, somebody posts this picture of the same technique that right. I was like, oh, I'm shocked for sure. No one has ever thought of this. And right. next thing you know, they're actually posting it on social. I'm like, okay, there's you know I probably got a handful of those that I've never posted, and there's no reason not to post them. I just I just were like, okay, well, I'll, I'll move on. That's all right. But that's just amazing how we're all connected in maybe a ways that we aren't really aware of. That like it could do us some way. Our creativity and intertwines us. I mean, yeah, there is definitely a possibility there. So I really believe it. And you know, as I have some guests come on the show, and they're like, Aaron, don't talk to me about spirituality. I know you're a spiritual <laughs> person. Don't do it. You know, but. There is something to be said about the connection that we all feel in the creative void. You know, we all jump into the nothingness and we all come back with something, right? We all make something out of the void and that connects us. And I think that subconsciously, like you said, we are all connected. Um, and that's just a perfect example. Uh, I love it. Yeah, no, I, in fact, actually, uh, you know, Ilski, Aaron up in New York, he actually was going to take on the artist name of Ethereal Light. And wow. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, actually, yeah. And like the same like week, he was trying to figure out like, you know, maybe what his name should be. Uh, and he I told me it's it. is, is awesome too. His, his like spiral graph, just to, to see a, um, an artist take something and actually create something brand new uh, is, is awesome. Yeah. So no. He's been nailing her. Just unbelievable. Yeah. yeah well, my, my, this cool thing I found it's a giant spiral graph. Cool. So I'm trying to figure out how I can attach this thing to a plexi and uh, do uh, some light painting with it. But this thing is massive. I mean, <laughs> oh, you know what? It reminds me of Mousetrap. You remember that game Mousetrap where you build the like different things around the joint? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought this was pretty neat though. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Speaking of spirographs, uh, at one of the meetups with Chris Bauer, we we actually somehow tangent into putting me in a climbing harness and swinging me off a crane. Oh, man. <laughs> and so then I am the human light tool that's doing the spirograph. So oh, I'm, it's going to awesome. be me physically with like two lightsabers. Yeah. And I'm going to be spinning around at like 80 feet in the air, like a bungee jump almost, <laughs> and seeing what we can get uh, with that. You got to do that at Burning Man. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, I'm going to do it next weekend. We are going to – Burning Man's canceled, unfortunately, this year, but we have a small, small group of artists and circus performers that we're going back to the same place of Burning Man, and we're going to bring a 50-foot uh, aerial silk rig. Right. And so I might be able to climb up that and strap in and, and yeah. maybe do a, a human spirograph. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so I, I hope the weather cooperates. It's it's the, the northwest is always a little temperamental uh, in springtime. Do you want to talk about a demo? Can you give us a demo of the spiral or uh, the sheet? What Denver? Would you want to model or paint or anything? I mean, uh, sure. Yeah. I can, yeah. What do you want? The peacock or we got the sheet or I can you do guys pick. This is your time. I mean, they're all absolutely wonderful. So whatever you feel, whatever you feel. You want to do the sheet? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good. So let me uh, let me get some tools together and um, yeah. Yeah, Jason, so, yeah. Speak to us while you what tell us about each tool and and what it is. Uh, with the uh, with the sheet, um, you know, I'm using the lens hoods, um, the color lens hoods from my painting brushes, Universal Connector. Um, I'm big on. You know, of course, I need to find my. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, you know what? This single handedly. Uh, actually, Jason, let's take a time out. I All gotta right. ask you this question. Yeah. And I, I think I know the answer, but I, wanna, I gotta ask you this question. All right. Dude, if you are traveling by yourself or with the Love Tribe uh -huh. to a tropical location, 
and you can only take three light painting tools with you. Your right. camera and tripod, given, but three separate light painting tools. What are you taking? Uh, in case somehow you guys, you know, find that you love the island and you're going to just live there and you inherited millions of dollars and, you know, it can just light paint. <laughs> That's the number no. one. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, man. Yeah, that, that's, that's a awesome. hard one. Yeah. It is, because you only have three. And that doesn't allow some things and it allows others. Right. And it could be different for every different artist, right? My answer would be definitely different than yours. But what I want to know yours. All right. Um, definitely some rectangle blades with uh, gels. You can just, I mean, you can rip these gels off. And, um, you know, I have a pack of the uh, transparent, just all the colors imaginable. You can just peel these off and change change colors. Um, honestly, probably some screw-on connectors. Okay, cool. We, we need some color. We need some color. Got to have color. Got to uh, have color. You know, some kind of blade. Like, this is just leaves. I... I I tape leaves in the fall time to a blade. Cool. Amazing. But. Amazing. And how do those leaves translate? Because, you know, I do a lot of light plants. I, I paint nature and nature all the time. And, and I'm actually painting them by hand. I'm drawing. I do a lot of drawings these days. But, you know, it saved me a lot of time if I could just pop a blade up the stock of the, of the plant. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, either the light pans would work or you could, uh, you know, take a blade and kind of just black it out or, or do something and just, you know, where you're illuminating light where you want to illuminate it um okay but man i'm still i'm still thinking about this uh what you asked me definitely I, i'm huge on the fibers yeah um the 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 color fibers um i would definitely have the purple fly, fi, fiber okay. optic um that is beautiful on the on the skin um it, it right. transitions a great um color tone um the, the purple fiber optic but man, yeah. Uh, I, I think so oh, no, dude, that's it. You got to be, you got to get creative with less. I mean, that's kind right. of sometimes the challenge is doing right. more with less. Um, it, it really is. Yeah, it's not the amount of tools that really, it's 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 how you utilize them and, and what you're creating. Um, but yeah, to me, it's just the, the tools of making color, you know, like the light excursion light. That is it, just the different color combos with the screw on connectors to get those different colors. So um, I really think with my work, it, that's really something that uh, um, stands out, I hope, is, is the, the different color hues and, and yeah. how, you know, something like this. Wow, yeah. The, the different, different colors. Amazing. You know? amazing. <laughs> Just yeah, amazing. That's done behind the bed sheet, you know, with the, uh, with the lens hoods, color. Yeah and um yeah uh now can you talk about the blades real quick do you sandpaper your blades and what does that do if you do it all i've heard some people do it um uh, after patrick uh he did something on a on a tutorial about making it milky with like tape and stuff like that yeah. um yeah i i just started sandpapering it and even with the the pamphlet that comes with the tool you know it recommends that you can sand sand it down and you do get a different um kind of like a milky smooth transition of light that's that's different than yeah. just lights radiating out it kind of holds the light inside the actual blade um so what i like better i don't I, I think you know the just putting my own little different kind of color and unique you know spin on the blade is, is something i prefer versus sanding it down yeah, right. totally. And yeah. are you peeling the gel plastic that comes with them? Or are you leaving that little film on the gels itself? Are you peeling the gel? Down? Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's transparent. I just I cut it with the shape that I want and then peel it right off and, and okay. place it on whatever tool I want to use. But okay, yeah, because I was debating whether the same kind of concept. If you leave that small film on the gel itself, uh -huh. will it be a different milky color than if you took it off and made it more of a crisp, sharp color, I guess. I don't know. I've never tried it. I don't know. We'll definitely have to try that. Okay, cool. So we're going to see a sheet uh, a sheet technique. Can you explain what the camera settings are? Um, um, this yeah, could be so, a basic sheeter. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I love F8. Is every, I shoot everything F8. But you, you won't find me going away from F8 from anything. I... I uh, I compensate the different light elements or the tools by changing my ISO. Um, 
you know, portraits in the, the studio here, a real dark studio, ISO 200 um, to ISO 400 with the fiber optics. Yeah. Uh, and always F8. Okay. Um, 300 lumens. I, I only shoot with 300 lumens. I don't, it's all in how you, uh, how you move, like, you know, Denver's behind the sheet, just it's that flow. That, well, that's my favorite thing about light painting is just the flow. Oh, yeah. The transition of light and just you're creating it and bouncing it. I love that element. Um, Man, yes. So, you know, with her, we can try it. I can get her set up and see how yeah. well I can see the light behind there. Okay, cool. That'd be awesome. Let's move this chair out of the way. So go get, a, go get a position there. We'll see how well you can hear me back here, too. So. You know, so far, so good, Jason. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so one of the uh, one of the important things, especially with the bed sheet, is to get get it as tight as possible. So have your model kind of step on the bottom to add, you know, because it's really going to highlight the different kind of shadows and layers and stuff like that. But yeah, really start at the back and then transition up the hand, hold it there for about three or four seconds, and then back in. Do the same thing on the other hand. Hold it there three or four seconds back to the back and then come up to the head and it's, you probably can't see it very well but um i recently developed a, a new kind of technique with that with uh pulling away you know at, at the head and holding it there and it kind of produces this halo um yeah kind of show you, you you'll really be able to see it in this image here but see those halos yeah that's yeah, great so with the with the the uh, lens hoods, you can actually create those different color halos um, by by just, you know, holding the light. And what you got to do is hold it at the head kind of, you know, at an angle to kind of produce that halo light. But yeah, yeah, that's something, something new, but cool. Thank you. That's great. You see that at the sheet at all? Yeah, or? no, it's great. Yeah, keep going if you want. Uh, that's, that's, yeah, that was great. And then other uh, than just adding different kind of colors and especially if, um, you know, throw a fractal on. Wow. And then yeah. you really, really get a get a different element and different different technique. The cool thing too about those fractals is, um, I think, especially with portrait work, um, it enables you to shoot at a higher ISO to really illuminate your model. Um, here, I'll show you an example. Yeah. Like this with the uh, with a peacock. So that's at a thousand ISO, oh, but wow. you're, you're doing less light painting. So yeah. what the fractal is doing is adding more light painting element into an image that you don't have to expose as long. So if you're shooting at a higher ISO, you're able to uh, illuminate your model a lot more efficiently and actually, you know, show her a lot better in the image. So. Oh, man. Awesome. Yeah. No, you know, uh, I've been using the portrait bar. Um, I, I got it. It was a huge upgrade from me um, yeah. awesome. actually doing a torch uh normal torch not a French torch but a normal torch and i would i would uh you know use that as a as a as a hood or a cover to to right. and so i'm getting crazy light leaks uh which is great this is another useful thing about the universal connector um but i've also i recently and i just unpacked it today i have an off-camera flash if you see some of these uh portrait light painters out there they're using a quick burst off camera right. uh, and then they're doing the rest of the light painting, you know, and the purist in me has a little bit of hesitation of going that direction <laughs> because I want every piece of light and color into my image has to be done with my hand um, and in freehand, honestly. And so I have one. I think I'm going to use it. I think I'm going to try to do some more commercial work. And I think when you get into that realm, like you said before, it's a whole nother different aspect, commercial versus, you know, not commercial. Um, how do you feel about the off-camera flash? Is it, you know, did you guys use that in, in LA? We did not. Um, we, we, uh, used the portrait light. Um, a lot of things, especially, um, with the fiber brushes that, that people don't, you'd be surprised how much light you can illuminate on a, on your model. Let me show you here. These work great for portrait lighting, believe it or not. And a lot of people don't utilize this technique, but. So when you're using the portrait light, you know, obviously people are just sliding it down the face and yeah. they're creating that, uh, that fiber look. But what I do is say, I come right when I come off the head, I pull it away and yeah. then back to the body. And you would be amazed how much light 
these things put off and, and create such a sharp image on, on your model just by doing, just pulling it away from the face and the elements of the body that you want to highlight in the image. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I have done that by accident, but I never actually thought about using it as a primary right. uh, portrait light, which is, thank you. That's amazing. I can't wait to try that. But I mean, in LA, we, we strictly use the, uh, the portrait light. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it was just that, that one smooth sweep, you know, yeah. right, you know, about two feet from the body up and over the head. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and, and it's, it's, it's the, it's amazing tool because you can just like the fiber optic or any light, depending right. on how close you are to the model gives you a different effect. And, you know, the angle of your hand, um, you know, the angle towards the camera, uh, are you facing away or towards the camera that could be brighter, give more shadows. You could highlight one side, leave the other side dark. Yeah, yeah, you can use it as an angle to highlight the shadows on one side and where, you know, mem the light might hit the nose and bounce off the structure of the, the eyes. And yeah, it's it's great. So good. Yeah. So good. Oh, man. Uh, Jason, are there any like other big projects that you're working on? Not, yeah, not not yet. Everything's really, you know, slowed down with everything going on. Um, but uh, we'll see uh, once things calm down, you know, um, I've got some people hitting me up about doing some more workshops and stuff like that. So those are always a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I, something big is always around the corner. And, you know, that, that's, I, know. <laughs> I love it. That, that's what's awesome is just uh, some of the opportunities and the things that I get to experience are, are awesome. Do you ever, uh, so on these workshops, is it is it mainly just light painting or do you kind of open it up saying, hey, you want to do light painting? Great. You want to do nighttime photography? Great. I'm going to touch base on Astro. I'm going to touch base on landscape. You kind of do one stop because you are a master at all of it. Right. They're, they're just light painting. Yeah. Um, you know, we just do the light painting. And um, it's funny, when I first started doing workshops, I had a whole list of these things I was going to say, these things I was going to do. And I, I found out that, you know, people were coming to my workshops just to see me. Yeah, and literally. So and, and that element alone made it more comfortable because I'm more comfortable with just sharing the stuff and the techniques that I do. And uh, they just wanted to see me do these things that I do all the time. So, uh, you know, that was awesome. Yeah. Oh, dude. Amazing. Amazing. I haven't put on a technically a workshop. I've done some work for Airbnb experiences. Right. Um, you know, I've done some private uh, sessions and stuff, but I haven't really gone down the huge group workshop uh which could be on the horizon for me i definitely think that i'm you know ready for that i just so many things on the plate it's hard to pick which ones you gotta get my time um i do want to do a tutorial on um i don't know if you've seen these techniques that i do awesome i don't think i've seen i think i've seen this image maybe or something similar but i wouldn't have any idea how to do that except maybe a prism Right. Uh, no, I think I have seen you do this because you angled down. You you are the prison. You're actually just using a torch and you are the prison. Yeah, I'll yeah. have a daughter. But the cool thing about that technique and the reason I want to do it is um, your universal connector is a light painting tool. So yeah. I'm, I'm you literally putting it on my flashlight and then I'm funneling that light where I want it to and beams the light and, and creating geometric shapes or drawing on the ground with yeah. the universal connector. So I thought it'd be a cool little tutorial to do just, uh, um, and it's fun in the fog. I mean, the, the effects you get, you know, are just, just awesome. Oh, totally. Yeah, no, you know, I had a smoke machine for a bit and then I let my parents borrow it and it came back not so good. So right. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't smoke or vape or anything. So, you know, I don't have any way to put uh, smoke into my pictures other than a foggy night, which right. came in here uh it's rare but if it happens i'm out for sure i, I uh, love fog. light painting in the fog is just oh man it's uh this is one of my favorites too this one right here there we go that's awesome and what what's creating this the all the flares dude that's like a hundred and fifty thousand flares you got in one photo <laughs> yeah so i took a uh i took a shoe box and put aluminum foil over it and then took a a um, a needle and I just poked a bunch of holes and then I literally take a light and just like a thousand lumen flashlight and just blast it up near near my camera um, right in the front a couple times awesome yeah awesome.
God, dude, it is so good. It is so easy to think about if you just honestly think outside the box or just take something and then turn it. Like I've said in previous episodes, just take a technique and then just turn it 25%. Right. It's not the same, but it's 25% yours. And now you've made a whole new technique based right. on the shoulders of giants that come before you. Right. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It is. It is. I love it. I really like this one. I really like when there's control and like, you know, there's like, there's, there's definitely some planning and control here. I mean, look at this. You've got, I, I'm really into symmetry. I'm really into painting with mathematics. And so like to have six images, three there and three there and three, three silhouettes, six and three go well together. This is a very well composed photo. You. I, you know, I mean, maybe I look at these things a little bit more in depth than most artists, but I mean, I'm looking at all of it. I'm, and I'm back. I'm, that's the fun thing about light paintings. I'm, I'm looking at your image and I'm like, number one, how did he do it? Number two, why did he do it this way? And you know, those are, those are some important things for me as an artist. Um, just and, the geometric of it all, just that, that like back to spirographs, just geometrics and mathematics. And just, uh, just I'm not always really, precise than, than maybe what I'd like to be, but um, I'm big on the flow of the image and just, yeah. uh, you know, that to me, maybe that's why uh, the spirals just took off the way that they do, just that I'm engaged in it a lot more because of the, you know, symmetry of it, so. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I can totally relate what you're saying. Yeah, no, thanks, man. And and speaking of flowing, uh, you know, I, I, I love... I love the, my light blades. I love Patrick. Um, I love what he's doing up there. I love him as a person and an artist. Um, and his flow with the kata, he often talks about, you know, the speed of the blades. And, and he, he, you know, he, he obviously, much like possibly me, I can relate to those deeper level of, of, of light painting. He's talking about speed of the blade, much like you would uh, a martial arts weapon because that's really what they're modeled after mm -hmm. and that's that really hits home with me as far as like flowing with the blade and being one with your light painting tool right. um you know that that is something special uh like you said you know yeah definitely yeah uh, and in the fiber optics the same way you know when i first when i first started you know playing with this i i probably have dude i probably have a hundred or more images that i've created with this uh, you know, just being inside, not knowing portrait, not having any models to paint with, um, you know, you can do so much with just this. Uh, like you said, you can do so much and be so creative, right? Um, especially indoors and in still life. Uh, it's just amazing. Um, I mean, even the spots, like the spots are just the end of the, the fiber optics. So, you know, it's you traditionally you use it to you know, swipe the face or, or you know, show depth in, in your model, but to, that's just popping the fiber optic in front, you know? So yeah, it, there's a lot of ways of utilizing the tools and not just one particular way, but there's there's lots of multiple ways that you can uh, you can use them. I love it, I yeah. love it, I love it, man. Oh, dude, well, uh, you know, I ask every single guest on every show, uh, what one song would you like to add to the master Spotify playlist? Um, it could be any song. It could be something you listen to in the car, the truck, going to work, light painting, meditating, anything you want. What's the one song you're going to add? Man. Well, there is one song I've been big on. Uh, the uh, I Prevail, We Don't Belong Here. Okay. I'm, I'm, cool. an, I'm an emotional person, not, you know, crying all the time thing, that, not like that. Just I feel everything around me. Yes. So um, I'm really engaged in, in emotion and emotionally driven by things uh, in my life. So um, just that song, the, the harmony of it. Um, and I'm a rocker. I love rock and that is love I prevail. Um, but yeah, that song, just the, the harmony in it really grabs me every time. So I prevail. We don't belong here. I love it, dude. I'm writing it down. I'm going to add it as soon as we get done here. Uh, thank you. I can't wait to light paint to it. Um, it's it's a super awesome, eclectic, worldly mix. Right. Uh, if you if you know about the podcast or the, the playlist on Spotify, it's definitely uh, not something that you're going to stay in the same right. genre because everyone's wow. different. It's a collect. Yeah. Music. Love, yeah. So it jumps around a little bit, but they're all good. And uh, it, for me, uh, it's amazing. Like this podcast, every time I hear the song, every time I pick up 
one of these. I'm going to be thinking about you. And, and every time I do a sheet technique or a peacock or any of the things mixed in between, I'm going to be thinking about you. And, and that's really what this community is about is, is, you know, and especially in these times of, of isolation, uh, we're closer together now. Um, which I already felt close to you and, you know, to, and to, to speak on the emotional part, you know, I'm as emotional like you as, as they come and, and my art is spiritual. It's, it's, it has tons of feeling into it. Um, if I'm not feeling that exact feeling, I often put my brush down and I take a step back and, and I only paint when I'm extremely inspired or I'm extremely emotional and I have something to express. Right. Um, and I want my work to convey that, that sediment right there, uh, just that emotion, and because there there is a lot that goes into it, and there is a there is a spirituality to it, and um, just I want to captivate people and inspire and motivate, and um, so that speaks volumes what you said and what you're doing. So thank you. No man, thank you so much, dude. And and I think I think it just says everything about the love tribe. I think it says everything about who you are as a father, a light painter, an artist, a photographer. Um, Brother, what an amazing sit down and an amazing podcast, Denver. It was amazing to meet you. I'm so, I'm so looking forward to seeing more of your creations uh, on your personal page, and we'll put that here. Um, and uh, Jason, I know that's Heartlight on Facebook. Yeah, and little tell Heartlight. All the different ways to find you. Um, yeah, so Heartlight Photography on Facebook, um, and then Heartlight Photography on uh, Instagram. And then heart light photography or heart light landscapes uh, on Instagram too for landscape work. So beautiful, yeah. beautiful. We'll put them all here. We'll put descriptions to everything we talked about uh, in the podcast, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you for the live light painting courage that you've installed in me. Think about just thank you for all the creativity and light painting brushes, tutorials, and 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 dissemination of all the beautiful information you've given us uh so we can go create our own happiness um man thank you so much thank you i appreciate it really do thank you all right talk to you soon guys all right see you later thank Bye. you yeah.